Hello everyone, hope you're having an amazing day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to get back into some more bar rescue bars and reveal how they are today. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. The Dugout Sports Bar and Grill. Following several months of not receiving rent, landlord Ed Cressy was required to evict the tenant operating the dugout and take over himself. However, it was nowhere close to Cressy's dream to become a bar owner, in fact, it's at the very bottom of his list of things to do. What's worse, the business has been nothing but inconsistent. At some points in the year, it'll be packed from door to door, while other times it'll be a complete ghost town. Due to strain within the workplace growing as a result of the non-existent clientele, Cressy's lack of experience and desires makes the situation even worse. To attempt to drive in customers, the owner creates random promotional products like his signature hot pussy, which the staff think is disgusting. With nothing working, one of the bar's employees named Emily had a lot of ideas that could have caused the bar to be respected. Though Cressy is extremely stubborn and shrugs off her suggestions because she's a 22 year old girl who has never been outside of Illinois. Being thousands of dollars in debt and losing close to $5,000 a month, they desperately needed the guidance of John Taffer. Upon Taffer's arrival, he expresses that the entrance to the bar is unimpressive and that the pizza shop nearby stands out way more. On the inside, Emily and Cressy are having an argument about hiring a manager and running the business properly. Further analyzing the interior, Taffer notices that it doesn't look like a sports bar at all, but more like somebody's basement. Additionally, the wires are exposed hanging from every television set, computer, and electronic device. Sending in some spies to enter the 1200 square foot bar, they're greeted by a bartender named Scarlett who takes their order. After getting some drinks that were poorly mixed, they attempt to pick some food off the menu, which proves to be difficult since most of the items are unavailable. Deciding on some mac and cheese bites with a side of ranch as well as the dugout dog, they wait patiently while Cressy whips up their meal. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, Cressy is touching raw ingredients with his bare hands and smoke can be seen rising out of the oil. Cressy was even seen dipping his hands soon after touching raw food into a jar of pickles which is beyond unsanitary. Having seen more than enough, Taffer storms into the bar and gives the incompetent owner a piece of his mind. Fast forward to the end of the episode, after things were renovated, this became one of the most polarizing episodes of the show. Due to the constant drama, the whole staff, including Taffer, walks out before the relaunch, leaving Ed to run things on his own. Despite everyone leaving, the dugout was doing pretty well for a couple of years until recently. Since the bar violated the state's reopening guidelines and was operating without any gloves or masks, it's been shut down indefinitely since New Year's. He certainly does not deserve a bar. Speakeasy Bar & Grill Purchasing Speakeasy in 2006, Keith Palacci was making bank, working every night till 5 in the morning with his wife Amanda. However, after having their first child, they wanted to focus on raising their family and sold it off to someone else. After several years of working corporate jobs, they decided to buy back Speakeasy for $250,000 in 2015. Thinking they would be met with the same amount of success they once had, things didn't rebound as fast as they predicted. Being short on funds, the couple turned to Amanda's mother Barbara who sunk $60,000 into the business, gaining a 50% share of Speakeasy. What she bought herself into was a deteriorating bar with bleeding profits that was on the verge of closing. On top of all this, Amanda takes advantage of her power as an owner to fool around and do whatever she wants. Almost always being intoxicated, you'll generally find Amanda on the dance floor and this type of behavior has even rubbed off on Keith. Including the fact that they have untrained staff, the bar has amassed an insane $250,000 debt. Urgently needing the guidance of a professional, the couple call out to the bar rescue team and John Taffer. Arriving at the bar with his experts, they express that the building has little appeal and the signs of attracting customers fall flat. Taffer reveals that a speakeasy is a type of bar from Prohibition, though nothing about this bar makes reference to that. On the inside, not only are both owners intoxicated, but their bartender DJ struggles to run the POS system and print tickets, which angers Keith. Wanting to get a scope of their customer service, Taffer sends in the president of his consulting group, Izzy Karach, with a professional chef named Erin. As they enter, both the couple and Barbara are in the middle of a family feud, but the two sit down anyway and order a Sazerac. However, due to the lack of ingredients, they order an old-fashioned margarita, which they barely had the materials to make. To test out the food, the spies ordered Loaded Tots, the Kenny Burger, Buffalo Chicken Wings, and Po' Boy. Being incompetent as usual, the owners seem to be playing darts as the customers wait to place their order. Finally, after 40 minutes, their food arrives and, unsurprisingly, it's not only bland but colossally undercooked. Horribly disappointed with what he was seeing, Taffer angrily walks into Speakeasy to set things straight. Once he was done working his magic, Taffer renamed the bar to Second Line Co. in hopes of giving it a fresh start. Following Taffer's intervention, the bar rocks an amazing 4-star review on Google and Yelp, and a 4.7 on Facebook. 
Across every platform, they've amassed over 200 reviews, which are mostly positive, which is a big step up. Taffer deserves nothing but praise for taking such a faulty business with problematic owners and giving them a second chance. Desi Romano Having been in the bar business for over 25 years, Desi Romano runs his business alongside his daughter slash manager Lindsay and his niece slash head cook Bethany. While the bar was met with instant success, things took a turn for the worse when Desi had a stroke and almost died. Forced to take time off, Desi's larger than life personality was long gone and his daughter Lindsay was incapable of running things. Considering the fact that Desi cares much less about the bar and drinks on the job, his staff followed suit. Even worse, the owner lets his staff run open tabs for themselves which only increases their debt even further. With his business on the verge of closing down, Desi calls out to the legendary bar rescue host John Taffer. Upon his arrival, Taffer sits outside the sports bar and grill in his car along with Derek Turner, a mixologist expert, and Tiffany Derry, a culinary chef. Unlike most bars, the exterior is actually clean and well lit which makes the experts admit that they would probably go in for a bite. Observing the inside of the bar through the security cameras, it's not only desolate but clearly has no concept. Taffer goes on to explain that while the owner has been in the bar business for 25 years, he's $150,000 in debt. The staff seems to be scurrying about to perform their duties, but most of the burden seems to be on Lindsay. It's clear that Lindsay needs to relieve her father the burden of physically coming to the bar every day, but that's nearly impossible. Being completely stubborn, Desi clearly isn't ready to part ways with the bar and relinquish his power. Meanwhile in the kitchen, everything is in disrepair with the cutting board being stained, meaning it hasn't been cleaned in a while. What's even more concerning is that some of the stains resemble mold, which expert Tiffany says would take a long time to form. Most of the employees seem to be smoking and drinking at the bar, which is illegal to do in areas where food and drinks are being prepared. Almost every single staff member has been working at the bar for years, but all of them have a bar tab and owe Desi tons of money. Sending in the owners of a previous rescue for recon, they order some drinks which are oddly put on Desi's tab. What they get are very poorly mixed drinks that are loaded with alcohol and unsurprisingly taste disgusting. Moving on to the food, the spies order the first place mac and cheese, which doesn't live up to its name. As they eat, a round of free shots are given out to the patrons, which shocks the mixologist Tiffany, who can't even begin to imagine how much money they lost. On top of this, Desi looks like he's on the verge of being blackout drunk, which makes the staff feel distraught. If the owner doesn't stop his drinking soon, the stroke and alcohol could become a deadly contributor to his demise. Fed up, Taffer stormed into the bar and attempted to lay down the law on Desi Romano himself, which worked like a charm. Today, the bar seems to be doing well and for the most part, Desi has been taking his job more seriously. Since Taffer made some changes including revamping the menu and changing the decor, customers seem to be loving it. Unfortunately, there are still some people who smoke in the bar but it's largely due to Louisiana law. Rocking a 4 star review on Yelp, this has to be another one of Taffer's greatest rescues. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one guys.